على الرسول والأنبياء المرسلين كلهم مكرمون السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My dear respected brothers and sisters We are commenting on a very noble statement by a very noble personality Ibrahim ibn Yazid al-Taymi said I feel sorry for the person who commits injustice against me. Why? You can guess what after this explanation. Because this person will suffer the consequences of sins because of what he has committed. And that's why the noble person will never ever wish that Muslims commit sins. And that's why Allah Jalla wa Ala uh, Allah Jalla wa Ala recommended us to repent all of the time. Recommended that in general. Allah Jalla wa Ala says, وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا جَمِيعًا uh, means that all of you should repent. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullahu ta'ala said that the noble person should repent on behalf of others. He should repent from the sins committed by other people. Look at this. The person, the noble person, in fact, he did not say the noble person. He said, ينبغي على المسلم. Generally speaking, the Muslim should repent for the sins that others are committing on behalf, uh, that are committing against Allah Jalla wa Ala. And the person should seek forgiveness for the sins committed by those people, by other people. And that's why the person if he is respecting, glorifying, exalting Allah Jalla wa Ala as he should be glorified, he doesn't want to see sins committed in the dominion of Allah Jalla wa Ala by the people of Allah Jalla wa Ala. He doesn't want Allah Jalla wa Ala to be disobeyed in his dominion. That is the logic behind it. Okay? And this is the first point. The second point is we don't want people to suffer because of us. We don't want Muslims to suffer with, because of us. We don't want people uh, to go to hellfire because of us. This is the real attitude that we need to observe. I'm sure, my dear respected brothers and sisters, that all of you are aware of the hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As. This is a very uh, great hadith. It is reported in Musnad al-Imam Ahmad. Uh, Al-Imam Ahmad said, حَدَّثَنَا عَبْدُ الرَّزَاقِ حَدَّثَنَا مَعْمَرْ عَنِ الزُّهْرِ عَنْ أَنَسِ بْنِ مَالِكِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى عَنْهُ أَنَّ النَّبِيَ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ That the Prophet صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم said at one time when we were sitting next to him. He said, a person from the people of Jannah will come to you from this dog. Then, all the companions were amazed. They were looking at this person. Who is this person who will come from this side? Then they said, uh, Anas ibn Malik said, a man from Al-Ansar came to us and he had wudu. He just had wudu and the, uh, the, the drops of water were visible in his beard. Or his, uh, the water was dropping from his beard. Then we were amazed. This person is neither Abu Bakr, nor Umar, nor Uthman, nor one of the great companions. He's just a normal person from the Ansar. On the second day, we were sitting with the Prophet and the Prophet said the same thing. A man from the Jannah will come from this door. So we were waiting for this man. The same man came and he just finished his wudu and his sandals were in his hand. A very simple man, very simple man, humble man. The third day, the same thing happened and the same man came. So we were so amazed. There was a young person from the companions. His name was Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As. We know Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As. By the way, Amr ibn al-As was a very intelligent person. He was from the duha of the Arab. He was from the politician 
of the Arabs, the politicians of the Arab. They said that Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, his son took from his father this kind of intelligence and he knows how to, uh, how to deal with things. So what did he do, Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As? He followed that person and he knew where his house was. He knocked in his door and he said, oh uncle, I had uh, a tension with my father and I had an argument with my father and I swore an oath that I will not stay with him for three nights. Would you allow me to stay with you? Why did Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As did this? Because he wanted to see why this person is among the people of Jannah. Why did the Prophet Sallallahu gave him this testimony? This is quite strange. Anyway, Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As said that on the first night this person went to bed and he did not have Qiyamul Layl, long Qiyamul Layl, uh, whatever, uh, the only thing that I have seen is when he moves from one side to another side, he makes dhikr of Allah Jalla wa ala. and that's all. So I was amazed, the first night, then the second night, then the third night, I could not bear it. So I grabbed him, I told him, oh uncle, see the reality of the matter is this, nothing has happened between me and my father, but we were sitting with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said the man from the people of Jannah will come from this door and you came for the first time, the second time, the third time. So I was amazed and I want to know why are you, why you are from the people of Jannah? He said, oh my son, I don't know, I don't know. This is what you have seen, this is my life, this is my life. And uh, subhanAllah, the people at that time their uh, outward life is exactly like their inward life. In fact, their inward life is better than their outward life, their external life that is exposed to others. So, anyway, uh, he told him, this is the reality, I don't know. Then he said, oh my son, come. And then he said, uh, I think all what I do is that uh, I don't know, I don't do much of ibadah except when I go to bed, I make sure that I have no hatred, no enmity towards any of the Muslims. I have no hatred, no enmity for any Muslims. I don't envy. Any, uh, I don't envy any person because of anything that Allah Jalla wa ala has given him. I don't envy any person for anything that Allah Jalla wa ala has given him. Now, this quality is the quality that this person was granted this high status because of. Subhanallah al -Azim. This person was granted this uh, equality, uh, this is status because of this just because of this who can who can clean his heart from any kind of enmity from any kind of envy from any kind of hate, hatred towards any of the Muslims and who can wish all types of good for all Muslims who think good of all Muslims of course, we are not saying that the person should be naive and he should, uh, 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 and he should cause harm to himself by naivety. No, we are not talking about this because I know that some people will jump into this idea immediately. No, we are not talking about that. We are talking about that equality by which the person can be granted Jannah. That equality is to remove any kind of hatred and enmity uh, from your hearts toward Muslims. You can establish justice, you can take your right, that is something else. But uh, to feel jealous that other people have more than what you have, or to wish that other people, uh, to wish that other people go wrong, or 
uh, to wish that uh, the ni'mah, the bounties that Allah Jalla wa'ala has given to certain people is removed from them. Or even if some people have dealt with you unjustly, you feel sorry for them, this is what? This is the highest position of, uh, this is one of the highest positions of Iman. That's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam said, حب لأخيك ما تحب لنفسك Love for your brother what you love for yourself. In the Quran, Allah Jalla wa Ala says, وَلَا تَسْتَوِي الْحَسَنَةُ وَلَا السَّيِّئَةُ إِدْفَعْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنُ فَإِذَا الَّذِي بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَهُ عَدَاوَةُ كَأَنَّهُ وَلِيٌّ حَمِيمٌ وَمَا يُلَقَّاهَا إِلَّا الَّذِينَ صَبَرُوا وَمَا يُلَقَّاهَا إِلَّا ذُو حَظٍ عَظِيمٌ The hasana, the good, is not like the sayya, not like the evil. They are not equal to each other. إِدْفَعْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنٌ Respond to the evil with the good. What will happen? فَإِذَا الَّذِي بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَهُ عَدَاوَةٌ The person whom you have hatred with or enmity uh, with, or he has enmity towards you, what will happen? Because you responded in goodness, and, re and, and instead of responding in a very evil way, he will be like a loyal and close friend to you. My dear respected brothers and sisters, we are coming to the end of this episode. And I would like you, all of you, to think of the statement of Ibrahim ibn Yazid at Taymi when he said, I feel sorry for the person who acted unjustly towards me. And I remind you with what Allah Jalla wa Ala says, وَلَمَنْ صَبَرَ وَغَفَرَ إِنَّ ذَلِكَ لَمِنْ عَزْمِ الْأُمُورِ The one who uh, have patience and the one who forgives, indeed this is one of the matters that are highly recommended by Allah Jalla wa Ala. Now I know that you will say we need to establish justice, we need to take our rights. I'm not talking about things that may cause other harms. I'm talking about if there is a possibility to forgive, if there is a possibility to wish goodness for others, then please do so because we as Muslims should not wish that other Muslims go to hellfire or commit sins because of us. Jazakum Allahu khaira. Barakallahu feekum. May Allah reward you and may Allah purify our hearts from any kind of enmity, any kind of hatred to any of the Muslims in the world and may Allah Jalla wa Ala guide all Muslims as Imam Ahmad used to say guide all Muslims to the right path so they can follow the truth and they become worshippers of Allah Jalla wa Ala wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh